Welcome back to the channel, Jason from Yapa Tree Properties here. We operate a busy real estate agency in Cuenca, Ecuador, selling and renting to expats and locals. Today's video is an apartment walkthrough and interview with the tenants. Let's go. Hola, I'm Gerald from Chicago and today I'm going to give you a tour of my apartment here in Cuenca, Ecuador. We're very grateful for Gerald's generosity in opening his doors to us and we hope that by watching this video until the end you're going to have a much better idea of the quality apartments available in Cuenca, Ecuador. Come with me. Welcome. So let me show you around. Right here as we enter first right off we have the dining room which is absolutely huge and has an incredible view. We look over right onto the, the river going by you've got the mountains in the background it's uh, the view just is, is stunning off of this balcony um, when we came in here we were so excited because we had this huge dining room table that we couldn't even uh, set out completely and when we got in here the space is so large we were able to put the dining room table in with the uh, the leaves it's an unfurnished apartment and we left the chairs home so we bought new chairs here great some great deals and some great uh, chairs and whatnot to buy here. It was wonderful. Over here, just to get the view, we were able to take this balcony, toss onto it some really nice furniture, and this is a breakfast nook like none other. The weather is almost always perfect. If it's a bit rainy or a bit cloudy, just something nice about it and refreshing. So it's a great, great location. Over this away, Here's our dining room, I'm sorry, our living room area. And we were very excited because we found a set that just worked out perfectly. And I think that this, this whole area just, again, just works really nice as a sitting room, uh, as a uh, living area. Um, we have another balcony <laughs> with more views, uh, more places where we can put some chairs. And if we have a party, we've got people here, we've got them in the dining room, we've got them on the balcony. It's fantastic. Um, we still need to get more things built here. Uh, we want an entertainment center. We want a um, china cabinet. But we found some really, really great people to do some work uh, for getting some of our material built. Uh, one of our biggest concerns was cats. And we had three cats, and we did not want those cats running out. This is Derek. We did not want cats running out and leaping to their death over the balconies. So um, the guy who makes our catios also made these uh, screens he came up with. We can just slide them in. And we've got the fresh air and comfort of knowing the cats are going to be okay. Over here, wonderful kitchen. What I love most about the kitchen here, you've got your, your little uh, breakfast nook so that you're ready for that. And then you've got a very open uh, space. So we were able to do something we've always wanted, which is take all of our um, cooking uh, small utensils and small uh, appliances and lay them out so that it's easy to find everything. And if you need a pressure cooker, you got a pressure cooker. It's right there. So the kitchen is amazing. And again, an incredible view. So the light is always coming in. Um, you can see what's going on in the city uh, around us. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. The uh, interesting thing about Cuenca that, I, that, that we've discovered is that when it's an unfurnished apartment, that means it's unfurnished, including appliances, large appliances. So we had to get um, the refrigerator, the uh, microwave, the stove, even a dishwasher, which uh, we, did a, we did a hunt and we found one that was absolutely the perfect size. So that was something we were able to do. Um, this way, laundry room with plenty of uh, cabinet space, a lot of storage. Uh, we were able to, we brought our own shelving units. So we've got plenty of um, places to put more things. The washer dryer we had to find and, and put in, but we did, no problem. We were, uh, we were told a two, uh, two bedroom apartment. We were just thinking we don't want, we need a, two, a three bedroom because of our offices. This is the maid's quarters. It's, it's, a, it's a room, it's, it's a, a whole environment. If we have guests over, we, we've got a uh, 
couch that opens up to a bed so our guests can comfortably stay here. They have their own bathroom with a shower. Um, we installed this sort of desk set so that uh, Derek can do work down here or I can do work down here. And we can easily take them out and still have a comfortable room for our guests. So let's go on upstairs. So what I love about these stairs is they are extremely safe and secure because they're, they're not open like a lot of the stairs that I've seen. Um, they've got a nice railing. Our landlord was funny. He told us the story how at one point there was an accidental slippage and he realized that these were extremely necessary. So we're, we're glad it's as safe as it can be. And right after he told us that, we found out that that glass is thicker than the same safety glass at O'Hare Airport. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about planes crashing into us. It'll be great. This area here, this is one of the, my favorite spots in the entire house. This is where we spend most of our time. It is just like an alcove, but we've got a couch that fits perfectly. We've got bookshelves where we're able to put not just the books, but my entire Doctor Who collection up there, which is very important. Had to have that. And, uh, so this, this is a really nice area. We put a little refrigerator in so that we're as comfortable as we can be. Over here, uh, we had our guy make a catio for us. Because again, the cats were a big deal and we wanted them to have an outdoor space. And so we were able to put this up and keep this available for us, uh, a lot of fun. But it's just a nice, comfortable area. But then we still have, over here for example, a nice, a little breakfast nook or just a, a reading nook if that's the, that's the case. And so this is all, all absolutely wonderful. Then this way we have it's the second bedroom or main office because it's a larger room and it's it's cluttered because we've got a lot of stuff in here but I have a keyboard that I wanted to get up. We have more books that were necessary, more storage for things. So then, of course, the desk. So there's a lot going on here. But then, while you're sitting here working, you've got this amazing view that uh, we had um, people make curtains for us. There weren't curtains here. And we had this made, which is just wonderful. We've got as much control over the light as we need. While you're working, it's just, it's just an amazing city and an amazing uh, area. And. Uh, the master bedroom, which is where the cats are, uh, are, we established this for them as a spot. And it's worked out really nice because they are very skittish. You can see the lumps in the bed. Those are cats. <laughs> but again, huge windows. So the morning light just comes on in and it's, it's just ever so comfortable, casual, and really, really a neat experience. Um, then, we have over here um, an, another room. It's the walk-in closet, but it's as large as almost any room I've seen. Um, there's always a spot in someone's house where you've got the cluttered things going on that you're always working on. This is that spot. But it's an amazing walk-in closet that leads right into a huge, comfortable bathroom with a shower, um, nice tiles, the jacuzzi tub, which is really, really uh, nice uh, those days when it's just a little chilly or uh, you it worked out too much. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is all that we've got. So in addition to the entire thing, we have a wrap around terrace that gives us a 360 degree view of the city. So as you come out here, you've got just beautiful views. We're able to see an awful lot of what's going on in the city. We've got over here the arena, sports arena, um, and often we can hear the cheering and shouting. It's not, it's not disruptive, so we're feeling like we're too close to noise. But it's interesting to hear soccer games. You can tell when somebody's scored a goal. It's wonderful. Um, again, the mountains in the distance, Cuenca is basically a bowl with mountains all around it. And I just find that so 
different. Chicago is very flat. And so this is very nice. We open up here. We've got just a huge amount of land uh, on this terrace that we're going to eventually have nice um, barbecue sets and, and patio furniture and post parties out here. We've got plenty of space for it. We're still walking around. We have another area here. This ends, this wall ends here and it doesn't give us a complete circle, but you just walk the other way and you've got all the way over to there. We've got this beautiful set of mountains. What I love about this is if it's raining, you can see the rains coming in and we call the river angry because when it's heavy rains, that river is just roaring there. And you can see what's going to happen if, if it's raining up there. We know we have to wear a nice warm coat, a uh, raincoat when we go out. If it's nice and clear, we're probably going to be okay. Although it's Cuenca, it could rain any time. We get to see the construction of other, other buildings. So there's a lot going on in this area. And it's been interesting to see as it, as it all progresses. And I will say, those buildings, once they're built, they're going to be nice. So <laughs> I think they're like one to three bedrooms. One, one to three bedrooms, yeah. and uh, it's just it's just a really nice area that you can see so much. The mountains, the, the buildings, you can see how, how the neighbors are just so relaxed and casual. The the atmosphere, the weather, it's this is not Chicago at all. Um, one of the things we hated was leaving a house that we loved and we had really built up for uh, almost two decades in Chicago. You don't want to lose that. We got here and we don't regret this at all. There's there's not a moment we thought, oh, why are we why are we here? This has just been fantastic. Basically, this is just going to be a casual, uh, you know, question and answer all uh, right. type session. So I do have a few questions for you guys. Um, and starting from the start, like, why did you guys decide to move to Cuenca? All right. Well, you want to take that one, Derek? Um, yeah. So uh, why we decided to move to Cuenca? It kind of started uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, just randomly, I got served up a video, uh, retired to Ajijic, Mexico, which is like, people um, retire overseas. I did not know this, you know, and apparently it's affordable to do. That I also did not know. We had a couple of friends of ours that right at 2016, um, they moved down to Costa Rica, they sold everything. And, um, but they were also people that were in the, uh, you know, we make a million dollars a year bracket. So I just figured it was for wealthy people to do. But upon further research, I found out that we could live very well on his pension, living um, just south of our border even. Um, so as we were looking, Ecuador kept coming up. Cuenca was a beautiful city. We came down, we visited uh, Quito, we visited Cuenca and visited Manta, and we settled on uh, Cuenca to move to. It was interesting too. Uh, he did a lot of research on uh, cities around the world, uh, the Philippines, Thailand, uh, Mexico, Costa Rica. Was, I love Costa Rica. And when everything we looked at, Cuenca was the one city that seemed to be best. Uh, I'm very, very concerned with climate uh, and the ch climate change. And Cuenca's got a climate that's <coughs> going to survive that really, really well. Um, I like the pace of life. I like that it's a, an active city, but it's not big like Quito. Quito was too big for me, which is funny. We came from Chicago, so. <laughs> yeah, Quito was actually my first choice. But we're the same. We lived in, well, I lived in Quito for a year before we came here and mm -hmm. we had the exact same feeling. It had more amenities in certain areas, but just the chaotic nature yeah. of it was hard for me to get my, my head around at the end of the day. I, and and um, I retired in 2019 and what I wanted to do was continue writing. And so Quito was just, uh, it's a little bit too active, whereas Cuenca was just nice and calm, I can get my writing in. At the same time, we can go out and eat. We can go out and have act, do activities. It's really nice. Awesome. And so cost of living was obviously a, a, a driver for you guys. <laughs> Compared to some of those other countries that you looked at, was it the cost of living that ultimately brought you to Cuenca? Or what was the combination of other factors? The that cost really... of living was similar in all of these countries. Yeah. However, my biggest thing, um, and I think Derek agreed with me, is Thailand or the Philippines there's no way we're learning those languages. Mm -hmm. um, it, whereas we both have a basic foundation in Spanish. So it was something that we could at least work with. That's a very good point. I mean, <laughs> I spent a few years in Thailand myself and I left for that very same reason. It's like, I want to spend a lot of time somewhere, but I want to really 
be able to speak with the locals, mm -hmm. integrate a little bit more. And mm -hmm. I knew without the language, it just wasn't going to happen. So that makes yeah. a, a lot of sense. Um, and in terms of this apartment itself, I know that you guys had some very particular requirements. Um, and this one, it's kind of interesting because on first sight, it didn't seem that it was going to tick your requirements. And you kind of just said, we're going to, we're going to check it out anyway. So can you, can you walk me through your department renting process and the decisions behind that? Well, we, we needed a three bedroom because we needed uh, office space. It was very important that we, we have the office space available. And as well as uh, guest rooms. As guest rooms. So and each room has a couch that folds into a bed. So when people come over, they can just uh, stay and enjoy. So we wanted a place that was, was that way. And Derek was very insistent. He wanted a balcony. He wanted to be up high. He wanted to be able to see the views. I wasn't as insistent upon that until we got here. And then, oh my God, I'm so glad <laughs> that we made that choice. Um, and our one of our bigger fears too was the cats. Uh, we, all the windows and doors open. There's nothing you could do. So we, we were, and there's no screens in any of them. So we were just fortunate. Yeah, we were fortunate to find a way to make that work. And now that we've made that work and got rid of my one big fear, um, it, it was great. But the, but yeah, the, the, when he said this is a two bedroom. We thought, no, there's no way. It's not going to work. No. But then, did you realize it had a maid's room at the time? No. Um, it was mentioned, but um, but what we were uh, used to seeing, like some friends of ours uh, rented in a building down the street, another penthouse unit. Um, I think they rented through one of the Estebans of the Alpha Tree. I don't know if it was you or the other Esteban. But um, yeah, so their maid's quarters off the kitchen was like a cement block. Um, you know, even the shower was just cement, 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 you know, for the, for the ledge and stuff. So they used it as a pantry. Yeah. That's what I was expecting um, here, even kind of seeing the video, because there's only, you know, it's like, okay, it looks fine in the video, but no, there's, a, there's an actual picture window there. It's tiled throughout, you know, the, the, bed, the bathroom's pretty much finished. It's not the same thing. This is a usable guest suite. So that really made you think, okay, this is not really a two bedroom. It's kind of like two and a half, that sort of scenario. I would call it a three. Yeah. In, in, the, in the States, um, a bedroom, even that size would be considered a third bedroom. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And, and they pointed out another area that the one that we use uh, for our main uh, living area, they said we could wall this off and make that another bedroom too. And we said no, because it works out well that way. Mm -hmm. But it, it and I think that's space. part of the reason why they liked us as much as they did, because we kind of were like, no, really minimal changes. <laughs> it's going to look see, the same. And, and you guys did have some changes, though. Like we look around and, and all the, the cat modifications. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you call the, the area upstairs? The catio. The catio. <laughs> uh, that is fantastic. And look, that dealing with pets, and especially when you have multiple pets, mm -hmm. that's when owners ears tend to really sort of pick up and like, okay, let's just slow down. Let's think about it. How was that conversation with the landlord and especially with having some of these modifications made? Um, well, the, the conversation with them is very easy, actually. Um, the landlords already had, um, they had a cat at one point, I don't know if they still do, um, but they do have uh, a dog or two that was in this uh, unit already. Um, and actually in your original video, you can see the dog scattering through <laughs> um, when you're walking up the stairs there. Sweet. Yeah, so um, so they were they were fine with, uh, with the number of cats that we were bringing in. Yeah. Um, but uh, we also looked at um, another unit before this that we nearly rented, um, but the landlord was not very responsive. So, you know, ultimately I'm like, this is probably gonna be going forward. We're not gonna get responses. The from relationship this. with the landlord is yeah. super important. So I'm really oh. glad that you trusted your gut on mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that one also, they had no issues with us having pets. Um, and I think um, there was the first one that uh, Esteban showed us, um, which was on the south end of El Centro. Um, it was a first floor unit. Um, very, very nice, fully furnished. Um, that was a pet friendly unit as well. And, um, you know, the furniture, you could tell, yeah, cats had been here before, <laughs> you know, in, in, in not a bad way. It's just, you know, you could see some claw marks. Um, so, so yeah, we would have been able to bring them in there as well. So the ad adapting for the cats was key uh, for my mental health, if nothing else. And we were, uh, one of the things that we did is we came here on an exploratory trip. Derek had already been in contact with some people and that expanded it. So in actuality, before we even moved to Cuenca, we already had a group of friends, and mm -hmm. a group of people we knew. And they had many contacts with different things. One was getting somebody who could do cat treats. And from there, we had catios made. From there, we had furniture made. The guy we've got right. working is, is phenomenal. And with, with the cat stuff, <clears throat> would you recommend 
that guy? Oh, oh down absolutely, down. hands down. So we're, we're happy to we'll include a link to his details in, in the description as well. Yeah, he also um, you know he built those tra TV tray tables that we have, um, and the uh, there's a in the third bedroom that desk that's against the wall that actually folds into the wall. Uh, so cool. yeah, he was able to build that for us. We just pretty much tell him what we want, and he's able to do it. <laughs> that's great. I mean, I, I love that aspect of living in Cuenca. Is just if you want something made. Go, you know, check out some designs online, take it to the local guy, mm -hmm. definitely remove the prices that you've, <laughs> if they are available, <laughs> because they will tend to see that and just be like, oh, okay, this is, yeah, this is think. the going rate. See, yeah. see. So, and Cuencanos have a very, very strong negotiating <clears throat> culture. So you can bet your bottom dollar that that's probably where they're going to start at and hope that you bring them down a, a little bit. Yeah. So, um, in terms of some of the differences in, in the renting process between Cuenca and, and the US, uh, I'd like to dig into that a little bit. Um, what are the main differences that you guys experience just throughout the process in general? Well, for me, I only rented once in my life, and that was for an eight-month stint before I bought my first uh, home. Um, but that was at an apartment complex. So I pretty much walked in, filled out an application. They had like probably 20 units available, and they're like, okay, that's for you. Yep. <laughs> that was kind of it for me. So. I, I probably had more experience in renting. Um, I rented in New York a couple times and, and had gone through a lot of process. And I, I'll be honest, I think it's similar. Yep. Um, it's, I think it's always dependent upon if you can get somebody that you trust and that is uh, competent at knowing what you're saying and showing you what, what happened. Um, I've had experiences in Chicago and in New York where you get that. Um, I've also seen experiences where it's not quite that, they just want to show you something. They just want to show you yeah. what's going to benefit them. But, but in all honesty, uh, when, when we work with the Apatree, we were heard and uh, what we were looking for was, was shown. Um, I think it's interesting too, we said no two bedrooms and we were shown a two bedroom, but I feel like, again, what we wanted was listened to and was, well, let's just right. show hey guys, you. This is a two bedroom, but just hear me out, hear me out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and we've experienced that before. Yeah. And uh, it, it has usually been, why are you even showing me this? <laughs> Whereas in this case, it, it really turned out to be for the best. The state agent that we had before Esteban needed to show us, um, you know, so it was going to be three units. The first unit was way too small. Um, it was not the number of bedrooms we wanted, not the number of bathrooms that we wanted, didn't have any outdoor space. Um, the second unit was getting warmer, but not quite that. Then the third unit was a giant penthouse. And it was like, I, this, I'm being international house hunter right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 again, it, it's, uh, the way we were treated with, our, with the, someone else was wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, but it just, we didn't quite hit the, the beats. It, it can be really tough too, like with the agents and the way that it works here, is yeah. there's no MLS that you can just jump into and be like, okay, let's pick up all these listings. No, mm -hmm. like Esteban does an incredible job of yes. literally you know, knocking on the doors and, and, and getting all those listings. So it, it's hard. And so to expect agents to have a lot of different properties, I do think that is a little bit unrealistic. Um, a lot of expats come here with that. It's like, no, show me all these other ones. And it's like, okay, we're gonna try, but it works in a very, very different way to, to what you're used to. And so that can be a big difference mm -hmm. that we've found with the, with the expats and those expectation gap. But I'm very glad that you guys had a, a wonderful experience with the best of mine. But it sounds like you had a, a reasonable experience as well with another agent. Which yes. Is, Really good to know. I can't complain about the experiences we've had. And, um, yeah. It's limited because we really didn't, we only had a couple of weeks to look for a place. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we wanted to get that nailed down. Once we decided to move, we wanted to have the place ready to go so that we had a place to move to. Yeah. And so I can't, only had to adjust to one new home. <laughs> I can't complain because the options I think that are there, um, I liked the, the fact that no one gave up. Uh -huh. uh, we, kept, we kept looking. And again, in, in Chicago, I've, I've been. Uh, on tours where I've seen a lot of places and some are good, some are not so good, and some are too perfect, um, and that's because it, it was way out of our price range. But <laughs> in this case, it all worked out well. Awesome. In, in terms of pricing, are you guys comfortable talking about that in terms of how much you pay for rent and the deposit? I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah, yeah. unless, um, you know, because we did negotiate down with the landlords. Sure. Sure. Um, I think they were asking for 1500 We went to 1300 for this yeah. place. Great. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we should, maybe we should just stick to what the asking price was. 
No, like I think for me, completely fine. Like negotiating yeah. culture for me is, is very big here. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that's certainly not to say that every landlord is going to negotiate. But mm -hmm. obviously, it depends on the market too. You know, like depends on the place. Um, so that's great in terms of you negotiate it down fifteen to thirteen hundred. And mm -hmm. was that because of any particular reason? Um, like obviously, everyone wants to pay less, and, and I completely get that. So, mm -hmm. but was it like something in the house that you're like, okay, no, it's not quite perfect for us. Therefore, we would only pay this amount. Not, not no, we as just much. Um, we offered uh, twelve hundred, which yeah. was the going rate for the other penthouse and Portage still sold that we nearly um, went with. Yeah. And um, Esteban was our go between, and uh, we ended up with. Uh, I think the landlord wanted just said I just want to make this minimum amount, um, you know, per month for rent. So we, I was like, that's fine. So we went to thirteen hundred. Yeah. I think the thing to to be aware of is that we can get nice places, and I, I've seen a lot of people that we know get nice places for four hundred, five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, big, huge places too. Uh, maybe a little further out of the city limits, but you can get some really, really wonderful places. Um, we were thinking maybe around 700 would be our max, and that would mm -hmm. probably get us a really, really nice place. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we got here, and we saw what was, what this was, and we we knew that it was more money, we didn't really. We were still in the 700. Maybe a thousand would be like an upper echelon. So that was why we were kind of more sure, to negotiate sure. that, and the fact that being un un uh, furnished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were going to have to spend money getting things in. And so some of the negotiation was because we wanted to be able to still have money to. And so this is definitely on the on the higher end of, of the scale. It's very central located. It's it's huge. It's got the wraparound balcony. It's it's really on that you know, sort of more luxury side of, of the market. Um, and yeah, we, we have the same conversation with people. It was like, yeah, we want, this is our budget and this is what we want. And that's great, but the location is really, really going to matter. Mm -hmm. and, and depending on the type of lifestyle that you want, um, do you want to own a car, that sort of thing. So if you don't want to have a car then, or if you want to own a car, sorry, then yeah, you have a lot more options and you can get somewhere that's a little bit more on the periphery and you know potentially save mm -hmm. money on rent, but then you've got the car costs to worry about too. So. It, it, it can be a little bit of a uh, it's a bit of a balancing act as to really what works for you guys and, yeah. and that's the important thing and I want to speak a little time. bit on the location too because that was major important um, we're about a block or two away from the train uh, which takes us right down to central and uh, that was we want we like the idea of living in the central area but it, it's going to be more noisy it's going to be more hectic mm -hmm. This is just, we're a few minutes away from it with an easy walk. So we don't have to have a car, which we really wanted to avoid. We, uh, we're close to so shopping. We, we do have two parking spots if we, we decide have two to parking cars. spots. So. <laughs> you can potentially rent those, by the way, if you want to, to someone in the building. Yeah, yeah. We, we will keep our ears open, I'll tell you. But we've got, um, the, the, the shopping is, is accessible. We, from this point, it's a mile, mile and a half walk, which one of the things we wanted to do was walk a lot. And so that, that's good to get to almost any place we really want. Um, and we're, walking along the river is, is just lovely. You've got mm -hmm. a really The really fact that we've got the river right outside our window and then the river walk is, like you said, amazing. Um, the mountains, we are so central to seeing everything. The location was, was ideal. Um, the, the place was just big enough and nice enough. So, yeah, it was more money, but it was worth it. Yeah, and going back to the location being right up the Tron Via, the fact that the Tron Via feeds the airport and the bus terminal, as well as all along El Centro, that's something that most cities in the, in the, in the world seem to get wrong, at least in the USA. I like uh, New York, to get from the airports into the city, you're still taking shuttle buses. Mm -hmm. You know, Chicago had, you know, the L feeding both, air, both major airports there. And I'm just surprised at how many cities don't do their light rail that way. Yeah, we're yeah. starting to notice that's more of a, I guess, selling feature for certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. In particular, <clears throat> it's opened up like that whole Missy Kata area, mm -hmm. which, you know, traditionally is a little bit far for expats, but now with the tram just there, like a five minute walk and, and jump mm -hmm. on the tram and then you're into town in, you know, sort of 10 minutes, it, it's a really good option mm -hmm. um, instead of the, the you know, two or $3 taxis every single day. So that, that's really good to know. I'm glad you brought up the train there. Oh yeah. yeah, and that was one of my requirements was, you know, I mean, you know, we, we wanted to be close to things, but barring that, as so long as we're off the train via, I'm happy, so. And what about just general lifestyle side of things in Cuenca? So how do you guys spend <clears throat> your day? I know that 
you both uh, have different creative pursuits that you spend your time on? It's, it's um, relaxing. And he had a very high stress job. Um, I had a high stress job as a teacher, but it, having retired, it was still nice to relax. Um, so the, the first process is we want to be able to relax. But then we want to be able to walk a lot. We want to get the, our exercises by walking around uh, to get to places. And that's nice. We, we, uh, tonight we're going to go see a, a movie in the theater that's English speaking, which is nice to have that Bobby? option. Of uh, course. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that one too. <laughs> Got to see it soon. And it, it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and also to be able to utilize their VIP seating. For, so the standard seats are six fifty. The VIP seats are twelve dollars, and they recline. They um, you can get food service to your seat. And are they the four D ones? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh no no no, not the four D ones. They're still two D. Yeah. Um, I think the from what I could see, the the only theater in the area that's doing English showings is Multi Cines in Millennium Plaza, yeah. and it's subtitled English uh, on two D. I haven't seen them do four D for that yet, Absolutely. but no, that no. might happen if more expats start going to the sure. movie. I've seen here. some local in four D, but yeah, I haven't seen any of the yeah. English. And I think um, a lot of, like, there was an event to see uh, the Avengers um, at the multi you know, to benefit one of the charities around here. And uh, I think a lot of expats don't realize that there are English showings regularly of movie theaters uh, over, or movie movies uh, over there. So. Sure. But I think those other ones, they tend to be different time slots. So right. I think that's okay. the appeal. Like okay. that's sort of more during the day. Whereas I think the English movies at, at multi -cinies, Yes, uh, they're 7 p.m. and later. Yeah. That's a, that's a, a Gringo Midnight theater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 So, uh, and the other thing is that we also have been to the ballet. We've been mm -hmm. to music concerts. Uh, we saw an amazing uh, production of The Greatest Showman, which was done sort of live. It, it had all been pre-recorded. It was uh, students learning English. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing it in English, although they've been pre-recorded. But it was, it was really amazingly well done. There's a, there are at least two theater companies here now. Um, so our ability to still be engaged in culture mm -hmm. is really, really nice. And so, that's kind of what killed Manta for us. We yeah. couldn't, we didn't see any of that going on, whereas Cuenca had it in spades. So. No, we're, I understand. We have events calendars for, for, for Cuenca. We mm -hmm. tried to create one for Manta, and it was just really hard to actually find <laughs> events to, to fill it with. Like, no yeah. joke, and look, Ecuadorians in general, when it comes to advertising, they tend to do it very late. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't help the, the situation, but still, it was really, really difficult. Um, so that's great. In terms of the events and integrating into the, the local culture, have you found the events to be the, the best way to do that? Or uh, what sort of effort have you made to, to integrate, you know, meet some different locals or just, you know, meet whoever you want to, to meet? But uh, how does that look in, in your scenario? I think that mostly it's connections. Yep. Um, Derek had one connection and that connection introduced us to several other people who are introducing us to several other people and uh, we've seen some uh, musicians perform and we're starting to see the same people mm -hmm. uh, over and over again yeah. and um, it means you've got to be kind of careful what you say sometimes because <laughs> it'll come back to haunt you again. But it's a pretty small community when you actually get down. It is. Yeah. It is. But it's a community that is open and receptive. Um, and if there's something that you're interested in, there's generally speaking a way to get connected to it. Yeah, absolutely. That's really good. And just before we go, any any last minute tips for people that are considering doing something similar? You know, maybe they're they're considering Cuenca, they're on their exploratory trip or, or something like that. I I've got to say that <clears throat> I think that um, Everything is a sacrifice. You're going to get a lot of great things moving to Cuenca, but you're also going to lose a lot of things. Mm. And you have to be prepared to say, it's okay. Yeah, I would say um, use your tourist visa for all it's worth. You know, take your time, uh, if you're, especially if you're planning to ship things down. Use that tourist visa, stay down here for a few months, um, kind of get to know the city, get to know all those different stores, what products are available, what are not before you get your residency visa and before you decide to fill that container because you may find that you don't want to take a lot of things. Um, like a, a, some of the wisdom is to bring appliances down, which I had an issue with uh, from the from the get-go, you know, because it's like, well, okay, these are USA standard appliances. If they break, 
where do I get parts? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so at that point, you know, we went looking around the different appliance stores. Um, you know, RCA, which is a very reliable brand in the USA, um, they're here. They're not expensive. You know, we got a, a new stovetop for about 200 bucks. Meanwhile, in our Chicago house, we bought an off-brand stovetop to replace it before the sale from a brand called Impava. And, you know, it was uh, stainless steel, but it was so thin. Um, it was just not not near the stovetop that we got here for 200 bucks, and it was 250 or 300 something like that. I think that's a really good advice to mm -hmm. do as much research as you can mm -hmm. on those first 90 days, or if you extend mm -hmm. and get the, the, the extension for another 90 days, so you're effectively here for like six months. That's that's a long period of time for you to really understand. Is is Cuenca or you know even outside of Cuenca, you know, maybe you want to go to Loja, Vilcabamba, mm -hmm. the coastal areas, Quito, wherever you want to go, that's six months. That's a, that's, a, that's a good amount of time before you can actually need to make any sort of real commitment to the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can save some money on shipping or you know decide, okay, I don't need this, but I can bring a, a huge amount of this, you know, mac and cheese or whatever makes you happy. I think there are two, <laughs> um, I think there are two options that are, to me, the best. Either you sell everything and go very minimal to stick a few suitcases, or you decide you have a lot of stuff you want to bring with you and you get a 20 foot uh, um, shipping container and you do that. Yep. In either way, we went the shipping container route and I'm, I don't regret it at all. Um, yeah, overall, I'm happy that we shipped as okay. much as we did. Yeah, and so I, either or, uh, either so one is just not cost effective for those smaller amounts. I, to me, the, the really options are either get rid of it all yeah. or take a lot. Um, and just anything in between is not necessarily necessary. Although I'm not dismissing well, it from anything. You might have like a, you know, you might want to get rid of everything, buy all new stuff when you get here, but there's probably like a bunch of sentimental items. Yeah. You know, full album, stuff like that, that's difficult to bring on a so, checked bag. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say though, because uh, you had mentioned other places to live, the healthcare system here in Cuenca is amazing. Uh, it's it's affordable and and reasonable and it's high quality. There are some of the other locations. This is one of the reasons we like Cuenca. Some of the other locations are amazing, uh, but they don't have the healthcare setup. That, yeah. That's a really good point. Have you had any experience with the healthcare system here so far? Uh, just I know you mentioned before that you have some travel related illnesses. Maybe just just um, a little bit. Uh, and um, for example, uh, we went to we found a dentist. Um, they apparently a lot of dentists in Cuenca are not doing full um, uh, cleaning like you would get in the United States. We found a dentist who does that. Uh, we went to an optometrist, uh, got some glass uh, glasses made and, and, and repaired, and that was good. Um, so, and we found a doctor who uh, speaks English, which. Um, uh, I find it extremely important to learn the language and be able to communicate. But when it comes to medical, when it comes to those emergencies, mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to lose all the Spanish. Humor, exactly. Right? In those pressure situations, it's it's really difficult. Yeah. And we yeah. found a doctor who was just absolutely incredible. Um, and so the healthcare system, from what we've experienced so far, it looks like it's going to be amazing. And uh, and that's a that's a big thing. I'm I'm a little more advanced in years and so I have to be a little bit more cautious where I live yeah. because who knows what's going to happen. There are a future. bunch of hospitals here, like there's four you know, private mm -hmm. hospitals that, that are mm -hmm. really good, good quality. Um, the difference does tend to be a lot of the personalized care. That's something that surprised me when I came here was that doctors are available to what's up at 9 p.m. at night. You know, that's, mm -hmm. That was unheard of to me, mm -hmm. and to see my partner doing that, I was like, "What are you doing? You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna destroy our relationship with the doctor. You know, they're gonna hate us. They're never gonna want to see us again." It's like, "What are you talking about? You know, <laughs> we do this all the time. It's completely fine." And the idea that you could make an appointment and be there that afternoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not like Chicago. <laughs> but that is where um, why I limited our search to Quito, Cuenca, and Manta. Like mm -hmm. there was a lot being said about Olón, uh, Montanita, Salinas but they didn't seem to have um, full service hospitals within a, a close distance. So that was immediate no for me. I'm sure the areas are very nice, but we have not checked them out for anything yet. Because no, it's definitely yeah. a big consideration. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of the people on the coast tend to gravitate towards that sort of Manta area. Yeah. Because of the, the hospitals and, and all that. And that, that's also why too, I think eventually Manta is going to completely pop off. 
and it's going to be a, a better destination than it is uh, when we looked. But sure. um, but yeah, right now it's the lack of culture kind of. Uh, it's, so. it's, it's, they're very, very different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they really are. Yeah. And so if you're considering Ecuador at all and you're thinking mountains or beach, you really yeah. have to visit. Like, yes. All, yes. The, all the videos you watch in the world, it's good. Don't get me wrong. That's great. Obviously, we're doing videos but for that reason. But you guys really need to come spend a few mm -hmm. months up to six months in ecuador is what you get and if you do that yeah what's the worst case scenario you don't like ecuador and you go home mm -hmm. but you've got six months to make that decision so you know exactly why, why not make the most of it yeah and that and that was the thing was i was pretty sure and we were both pretty sure seeing the videos on manta that we were going to pick manta oh, yeah. so that that trip we were here for probably two and a half weeks we spent two days in like <laughs> we spent uh you know and keto was kind of our, our waypoint you know so flew back all that other stuff. So we probably spent a total of four or five days in, in Quito. Monta, we spent you know a week and a half, and um, within two days we're like, this is not for us. Yeah, it's, not for us. <laughs> it's, it's not for everybody. I completely understand. Yeah, and I'm I can. I'm a coastal guy as well. Oh yeah, exactly. My you know I have family that lives in uh, Naples, Florida, and areas like that where they love the coast, even if the town doesn't have much to do. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's just not what we enjoy. I yeah. understand. Well, that's very good, guys. Thank you very much, Derek, Gerald, for your time today. Um, it's been very helpful for me and I hope helpful for the audience as well. Um, so thank you and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you. Thanks a million to our lovely tenants for allowing us to take out some of their time to shoot this video. And thank you for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a cheeky like as it really does help our message reach more people. And of course, the Yapa Tree Properties team is here to help you find your next property to buy or rent in Cuenca. If you're in the market, do check out the listings at yapatree.com. You can also send us your property requirements and we do the searching for you. Or we also offer real estate trips designed primarily to educate buyers and renters. These are perfect for those on their exploratory trips as the core outcome is for you to understand whether Quanker's property market will work for you. I'll leave links to these services in the description below. Lastly, I do also find myself spending a lot of time just conducting what I call mini consultations on all areas of moving and living in Cuenca. I don't have a formal booking process for this right now, but if you would like to discuss this, do feel free to hit me up, jason at yapatree.com. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus. Christmas, a time of joy and happiness, unless you were bad this year, and then you might meet one of Santa's more sinister helpers. Krampus, a fanged monster who enjoys beating and eating wicked children. La Bafana, who flies in the chimney on her broomstick eats Christmas. <laughs> Icelandic trolls who fetch the naughty ones back to their hungry mother, Gryla. Thirteen monsters in thirteen stories from Christmas legends as old as time itself. Krampus and Friends, tales of terrifying Christmas monsters from around the world. Available now on Kindle and at Amazon or wherever books are sold. Get Krampus and Friends by Gerald Cole and pray that you were good enough this year. Ha 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 ha!